to all uh, welcome to third day fdp program uh, on artificial intelligence and blockchain application for agri and food sector during 24th of jan to 28th of jan sponsored by atal aict delhi and organized by the indian institute of plant research today uh, we have a resource person mr deeran uh, deerendra he is from stell labs technology going to be talk about technology impact and dairy supply chain uh, process and uh, just if you look out the uh, profile of the uh, uh, our resource person is specialized in uh, product development and product management now currently working in stell, stell labs technology private limited as a pro program manager uh, since from 2019 till today and uh, they had he had a vast experience in different companies like reliance general insurance and other uh, uh, sectoral like accenture other companies and also is the alumni of uh, irima and i uh, hope this session will be uh, will have a more insights and uh, practical exposure you can uh, see in how uh, stell labs going to be adapted and models are changed how it's going to be happening in the dairy sector uh, i would like to uh, hand over the session to the deerendra sir thank you thank you ganesh thank you sir for introducing me so i am deerendra and uh, presently i am basically dealing with uh, one of the artificial intelligence uh, cattle recognition system so that is one thing which is in pipeline and i am glad that i'll be able to discuss with such a vast uh, uh, audience experienced audience so that is one thing that i am looking forward so uh, first let me introduce uh, my company stellaps uh we are uh, basically we are farm to consumer uh, dairy digitization service provider and we are intending to improve uh, the quality uh, productivity and traceability in the entire supply chain uh we since we have a, a iot stack uh, hardware uh, products which are there we wanted to leverage the data which has been collected from the devices to generate uh, uh, to basically help uh, dairy as a customer to to basically leverage this data to help uh, farmers so basically uh, there are two types of products which uh, we have one is, uh, is is our iot stack which is which is basically a, a big data generating machine and we are basically leveraging this data to to generate uh, data led services for the dairy ecosystem so uh, just give me a minute yeah okay so basically uh, this entire presentation i wanted to go uh, in basically in a, wanted to basically give you a storyline so that uh, uh, so that you are able to grasp this information and uh, basically we wanted to have a meaningful conversation in this uh, session so first i'll be i'll be going through the dairy supply chain give you giving you guys a context of what is the supply chain currently and uh, what are the basically what are the problems in the dairy supply chain uh, because there are a lot of factors involved and the, all these actors they have different pain points and then after that how basically we are leveraging tech to 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 address these problems so the entire uh, session is basically divided into three parts Uh, i'll first start with the dairy supply chain all these things uh, point number 1 and point number 2 i'll try to keep them brief uh, so that you understand the problems and you understand the context and once you understand the context then probably we can talk about the different use cases uh, which uh, which are generated through uh, by leveraging the technology uh, feel free to like ask questions in between uh, i will basically go uh, go ahead with the uh, dairy supply chain part so uh, let me first introduce uh, to one of the uh, uh, women dairy farmer basically how does a typical women dairy farmer in india looks like so uh, we have a story of geeta uh, geeta is a dairy uh, dairy farmer who, who has two cattles with with relatively very uh, poor yield which is around 3 to 4 liters per day per cattle uh she earns less than 38 rupees per day uh she she also does not have access to farm services that's why their productivity is low when i'm talking about farm services it means the nutrition advisory uh, veterinary services uh, in cattle insurance and also uh, also she has uh, uh, she does not have access to formal lending system 
So even if she wants to uh, get all these services, and even if she wants to increase the number of kettles and take care of productivity part, because she does not have access to formal lending system, uh, it becomes difficult for her to basically, uh, uh, I mean, uh, enhance their dairy farm in terms of like number of cattle and productivity. So this is the story of Gita. Now, the scary thing is uh, there are 50 million Gitas available in India. They are all these small dairy farmers, uh, which, uh, I mean, which are there, which are basically uh, facing all these problems. And in return, they are providing milk uh, to the uh, dairies and that milk is reaching to the consumers. So most of the milk which we are getting from the cooperatives, uh, these are collected from the smallholder dairy farmers. So what I wanted to address is the scale of the problem is, is very high. So uh, this, is, this is the story of Gita. Uh, I, I just wanted to uh, like, uh, 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 run you through the uh, dairy supply chain part. Uh, so basically, uh, the milk which we are getting, it, it, it we basically get the packaged milk from a dairy. Suppose we are getting milk from Amul or from Nandini. So what happens is basically they, the dairies collect this milk from a farm farmer. So basically, the supply chain starts from farm. From farm, it farmer basically has cattle in their farm, and uh, and, and and they basically take care, uh, take, uh, takes milk, collects milk from the cattle. Once the milk is collected, some of the milk is is, is basically uh, consumed uh, by them only, and the uh, remaining milk, uh, most of the farmers basically they sell this milk. So in the rural areas, uh, there are collection centers uh, which are developed. So these collection centers uh, uh, basically are, are the places where an agent or operator is available and he or she collects the milk from the farmer on a daily basis. So basically collection center is a place where the grading of the milk is done and uh, the payment is done to the uh, uh, farmer on, on, a, on a 10 day basis, on a 15 day basis. And once this uh, milk is collected from uh, in a collection center, this milk is delivered to a chilling center. Now I wanted, since uh, milk is a perishable uh, commodity, and you also are aware that it needs to be chilled as soon as it comes out from the udder of the uh, cattle. So, but because uh, you also understand that uh, these uh, all these uh, uh, supply chain nodes are in the in the in the in the rural areas. And also uh, because uh, there are only four, five, four to five villages, farmers who are basically uh, pouring milk to the collection centers. So it becomes difficult for the collection center to, to basically provide the chilling center, chilling facility at, the, at that point of time. So basically that it does not have economic viability. So even if they want to uh, chill the milk at collection, collection center, it becomes difficult uh, for the, economically difficult for the uh, dairy. So once this uh, milk is collected from collection center, uh, this milk is basically transported to the chilling center. So the objective of the chilling center is nothing but to chill the milk, uh, get it into an optimal temperature, which is around four degrees Celsius. Once the milk is chilled, then the milk is transported to the dairy. And uh, once it reaches the dairy processor uh, in the plant, they, they basically, uh, uh, I mean, receives that milk and then they basically uh, uh, pre uh, prepare different pro milk products as well as different categories of the milk as you've seen, toned milk, cold milk, uh, paneer. And so basically all these things, are, all these items are created from the milk. Once all these items are developed, then, then basically uh, there's other supply chain, which is the forward linkages to the consumer that, that starts. So from there, the packaging happens and then it went, it went to uh, the dock of that particular city, suppose say Mumbai, and then from dock it reaches different distributors. From distributors, it reaches to different retailers. And from retailers, we, we as a consumer, we buy that uh, product, milk product. So Stellabs, we are basically working on the uh, backward linkage of this particular supply chain. We are available from, we are available at farm side, we are available at collection sector, and we are available at chilling center. So these three nodes are there wherein 
our products are there and wherein we are trying to basically first digitize this this uh, uh, particular end of the supply chain so this is this is in general the supply chain of that particular uh, of the, of uh, milk uh, now what is the problem what is the pain point at different uh, uh, points of uh, nodes so we were talking about we we'll first talk about the uh, farmer so at the farm side the actor is a farmer basically farmer as i told you uh, the story of geeta uh, she does she basically she has uh, uh, she does not have access to the support services she does not have because she does not have uh, the credit facility available she cannot uh, uh, i mean get more number of kettles get uh, services different services for that particular kettle so in in uh, the resultant is the low productivity of the uh, of the animal so the productivity uh, is is i think the major issue at this point of time for the part of farmers and if the productivity is not there uh, at that farm side then farmer profitability is also not there so with two kettles it becomes extremely difficult for farmer to to basically generate profit uh, from this uh, dairy services so Uh, this is these are the main pain points of the farmers once the farmer uh, basically pours the milk uh, to the collection center so what happens in a collection center if it is not digitized if the collection center is not digitized uh, i mean it becomes difficult for the dairy to to basically uh, 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 to basically see whether any malpractices are happening or not so suppose uh, there is a lot of manipulation which happens at the collection center uh the the grading and uh, and the paying mechanism it if it is or if it is not digitized there there are lot of lot of chances for manipulation also so uh, basically the dairy they they lack complete control over the complex supply chain and they cannot ensure that the good quality milk is basically reaching the consumer so uh, and in return what what basically happens after that the consumer uh, he may get a quality or an unadulterated unadulterated products so uh, in a nutshell the problem the key problem which we we uh, found out initially is the transparency because there is no transparency in the uh, in the uh, ecosystem uh, everyone can uh, take advantage of this and the various manipulation and uh, mal practices can happen in this uh, particular supply chain which basically is uh, is is uh, uh, is is basically uh, it is basically a issue for almost all the stakeholders in this particular supply chain nobody is get basically earning a month, uh, uh, earning enough because of all these uh, mal practices so so since transparency is an issue what we have tried to do is we have tried to digitize the entire supply chain so now i'll be basically talking about how how are we basically solving this problem uh before that i just wanted to show you uh, one video uh, which basically highlights what stalaps is doing how we are doing there uh, is sound is not coming audio is not coming sir yeah what you do you will share it while share the screen that time we do have some kind of uh, uh, share sound option will be there else you share with me i can share it from there as well if you want okay i will what i'll do is i'll basically share this video at the end if you link to the chat but i'll i'll share it from my side uh okay chat with chat is there chat option down sir chart chart yeah near to participant in between participant and share screen there is something called chats yeah i got it yes. i got it yes. yeah i got it go on beta share it i've shared it with you go on beta please let me know if i'm rushing through the uh, presentation yeah yeah it's going fine fine I share it now. Is it visible? Yes, Ganesh. Your enterprise needs. One minute. Now. The sound is coming. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Coming, sir.
Milk is the largest crop in the world and India is its largest producer with 76 million households engaged in it. But in order to become a world leader, not only in production but also in quality, we need to address low farm productivity, optimize the milk supply chain and ensure farmers have access to financial and extension services. Solaps is a farm to consumer dairy digitization service provider, improving productivity, quality and ensuring end-to-end -end traceability across the dairy supply chain. Our vision is to economically empower smallholder dairy farmers. Solaps leverages advanced analytics and artificial intelligence through our full-stack SmartMoo IoT platform to enable dairy ecosystem partnerships with financial and insurance institutions, veterinary services, cattle nutrition providers, etc. to drive significant value for each stakeholder, especially the smallholder farmers. Our patent pending and proprietary solutions are successfully applied in over 250 plus dairy companies across India. Stellaps Smart Moo IoT platform acquire data via sensors that are embedded in animal wearables, milk chilling equipment and milk procurement peripherals transmitting the same to big data cloud service delivery platform where Stellab's smart move suite of applications analyze and crunch the received data before disseminating the analytics and data science outcome to various stakeholders. Our herd management solution, Move On Animal Wearable and Associated Application, monitors cattle health, activity, and nutrition data to enable preventive healthcare, artificial insemination on right time, and higher yield. Stellab's Cattle Facial Recognition System aims to strengthen animal related digital data for insurance companies, nutrition providers, and financial institutions. Stellabs has also partnered with the world's leading animal nutrition provider to deliver contextual nutrition advisory and farm management advisory to farmers. Stellabs has integrated its platform with banking APIs to facilitate payment directly to the farmer's bank account and is also helping farmers in getting access to credit, insurance and other banking services using proprietary credit worthiness assessment model MooScore. Our smart automated milk collection units enable transparent, traceable and efficient operations at milk collection points. The data collected is used to provide farmer advisory, real-time procurement monitoring and eliminate paperwork with automated reports. Our cold chain management solution consists of sensors that monitor milk temperature, volume of milk and energy consumption to optimize milk chilling eliminate pilferage and ensure cold chain protocol adherence. By collecting and monitoring data at each node of the milk supply chain, Stellab's SmartMoo platform creates a traceability network of milk which enables quality conscious consumers to trace milk back to the cow. Stellabs has successfully applied its smart move platform to impact over 2 million farmers, 1 million cattle and 11 million liters of milk each day. Stellabs has been recognized as a technology pioneer by the World Economic Forum for developing cutting-edge innovations with deep social impact. Is it okay? Shall I stop sharing? Master the ultimate AI. In you can share it now. Okay, okay. I need to share it again. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, visible now. Make it full screen. Uh, so basically, uh, the video tried to uh, to try to address uh, that uh, that uh, basically, even though uh, we are the world leader in the milk production, 
but uh, we are lacking in the productivity we are we are lacking in the quality and and end to end traceability uh, for the mill so what uh, what startups has tried to do is is, is basically try to uh, address all these problems and uh, and and basically try to uh, to to generate significant value for the small uh, small holder farmer so how are we doing it like uh, uh, i mean in the video uh, uh, the lady talks about the different products and how we are basically collecting data from from different nodes of the cattle and uh, once all this data is collected we are basically leveraging all this uh, data to generate uh, nutrition advisory to generate uh, uh, different analytics for the uh, dairy so that the decision making becomes easy so what we did first is we we have first developed the digital access network because uh, i mean as you all all are aware that uh, i mean our rural uh, india it likes a digital infrastructure if you want to do something digitally first you need to get the data if, if we wanted to do the provide the value added services to the farmer we first need data so what we first did is uh, uh, since the transparency was the key issue uh we we first tried to address the uh, collection center problem so uh, we have first deployed the smart amcu so uh, and and then we first addressed the collection center issues and once that is done then we basically move to the uh, chilling center and once this uh, traceability once this uh, transparency issue is resolved then we move to the uh, farm side which is when and then we developed the uh, cattle activity monitoring system and hard management so even we have not started from the farm side because it was not uh, viable for us at that point of time we first wanted to address the key problem which dairy is facing so so just to update you guys uh, uh, my our, our client is basically dairy it is not farmer it is not operator uh, it is it is dairy so basically what we we wanted to generate value for the dairy which is which in turn is generating value to almost all these stakeholders uh, of the supply chain so uh, i'll first start with the uh, uh, farm side uh, farm side intervention that we have done so what we have done here is we, we are we are using sensor based technology with uh, just a second so basically you are able to see a, a move on device there so what this device does is it basically monitors the activity of the cattle it it basically tracks the uh, uh number of steps that the cattle is uh, is basically uh, doing in a day uh, how much time it is sitting how much time it is uh, it is it is standing so basically the uh, uh, veterinary science says this if you are able to monitor the activity of the cattle you will be able to predict the abnormality in the behavior of the cattle uh, you you will be able to uh, detect the heat or heat in the cattle so that once the heat is detected then uh, artificial insemination becomes uh, uh, i mean it comes into picture and if you are able to identify that heat period i did the ai success rate becomes uh, high and uh, so basically these are the problems these are the uh, so, uh, problems that this product is addressing it is trying to detect the heat it is trying to det det detect the abnormality pattern in that cattle so once both of these things are done uh, the the required measures can be taken uh, by the veterinary doctor at the, uh, for that particular cattle now what technology are we using we are just this is a embedded product we are just using the sensors to uh, to to basically get the activity data of that particular cattle so this is how we do it uh, uh, moon device is there it it basically uh, tracks the activity as i told you walking lying standing time uh, and uh, there is a base station uh, at, at that particular farm so basically uh, the base station receives the data from the moon moon devices in a farm and it basically transmit to the cloud and once that is done then then basically uh, that data is we we basically do uh, use artificial intelligence to generate insights to predict whether that cattle is is in, is is, is uh, giving a pro abnormal behavior or whether that particular cattle is in heat or not now guys actually heat becomes a, is, heat is a very critical thing for the farmer because if you know if the if the farmer is not able to predict the heat uh, uh, at the right uh, at that particular time of time 
and if what happens is even if he detects the heat today it may happen that if he if he takes action and if he does the artificial insemination the cattle will not remain in heat so uh, so the time factor is also important as uh, we need we what we does is basically we detect the heat at the initial point itself so that's how we are basically leveraging the artificial intelligence uh, uh, to predict to do the predictive analytics for the heat we are also doing the uh, abnormal uh, behavior uh, prediction so once once uh, uh, the abnormal behavior is predicted then but then the farmer can take uh, services for a particular veterinary doctor uh, so uh, in that case uh, this is a preventive basically it is a preventive health care so so what we are trying to do here is we are trying to ensure that the cattle which is an asset to the farmer it it remains healthy because if it remains healthy then it is going to give uh, more milk it is going to stay for a longer time which in turn uh, which in turn will uh, enhance the quality of the milk as well as uh, i mean it is critical for the profitability of that particular farmer so 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 this device is basically nothing but just a activity meter like we have fitbit and we monitor our, uh, our daily steps heart rate and uh, other stuff similarly we wanted to do this for cattle to ensure that the productivity part has been taken care of we already have we we also have one one app so it is it is a herd management app because the veterinary doctor goes in there uh, in in the present scenario what happens is he tracks all these cattle uh, but these are not there in a particular application in a particular organized centralized uh, system these are there in their notebooks and all which which becomes uh, which i mean if they wanted to do uh, take a uh, or take a decision uh, at real time it becomes very difficult for the dairy as well as for the veterinary doctor to to basically address this issue so what moon app does is it is just a herd management app so how basically we are doing it i think i have explained all uh, this thing here that we are basically recording uh, the uh, recording the activity data and we are also recording the uh, specific vaccination ai dates uh, etc associated data as also and we are we are basically uh, getting this data in real time and and and, uh, and we are leveraging ai and uh, analytics to generate uh, predictive analytics for uh, For for that particular cattle. So, in nutshell, what we are trying to do here is we are trying to use the technology to address the productivity part for that cattle, because we need to understand that even for a dairy, the asset is the cattle, because it is giving milk. So, so it becomes extremely uh, critical for for the entire dairy supply chain stakeholder that uh, the asset uh, uh, asset uh, assets uh, uh, quality enhances. Uh, if if it, if, it, if its quality enhances, then all the stakeholders in the supply chain are going to benefit from this. So, these are some of the benefits that I talked about. That uh, we can uh, we basically the preventive healthcare can be taken care. Estrus detection is nothing but uh, the uh, heat detection part, and uh, we are basically in in nutshell we are uh, we are basically taking care of the productivity part. these are these uh, these are the uh, screenshots for some of the portals which are which the dairy uh, which are provided to the dairy so they, the dairy has access to all these cattles which are the which are the registered cattles uh, in their uh, dairy uh, for a particular region or, uh, uh, whether it is calf or whether it is uh, uh, heifer whether it is stacked or not what is its what is the cattle health status what is the ei vaccination status so all these all these things are available for the uh, dairy uh, dairy uh, uh, in nutshell so what happens is if the dairy has all these information available uh, in a single uh, uh, in, in in a single portal basically their decision making becomes effective so what we have tried to do here is we have tried to uh, share all these insights and data with the uh, dairy in a portal form so once the productivity issue is is like handled uh, uh, we will talk about the uh, the transparency basically uh, basically the uh, i'm talking about the collection center uh, uh, node 
so uh, as i told you before also that uh, at collections basically farmer goes to the uh, visits the collection center and farmer pours the milk there now the key functions of the collection centers are uh, the operator basically grades the milk grading when i'm saying grading it means uh, he's weighing the milk the volume uh, volume details are available uh, it is it is testing the milk uh, it is it is checking whether it, is, it has fat how much fat that milk is having how much snf snf is nothing but a protein so how much fat and snf are available uh, for that particular milk for farmer and the payments are basically done on the basis of the quantity uh, on the basis of the uh, farm uh, fat percentages as well as the snf percentages so smart amcu uh, i mean uh, the in collection center what you what usually happens is first the grading of the uh, milk is done and then basically the it is also a payment uh, point for the particular farm now uh, in a non digitized scenario what used to happen is uh, even though they have uh, the computer system available but the data is not centrally available for the dairy but the dairy does not know how this uh, how a particular collection center is performing for a particular day how much volume is collected uh, when uh, i mean what uh, I, i mean when is the milk poured whether the milk that is reaching the dairy process or the dairy plant whether it has been collected yesterday or whether it is being collected today so uh, it becomes extremely difficult for the dairy to to basically uh, keep track of all these things so what we have tried to do is uh, we have developed uh, so basically this is a smart amcu uh, this is a collection center where when the uh, lady is basically pouring the milk and this is the testing and this is the product so i'll i'll come back to the product so i as, as i explained you in a non digitized uh, uh, scenario uh, uh, i mean there are chances of manipulation as well as man practices uh, uh, apart from that uh, i mean dairy since it does not have access uh, to the uh, uh, does not have control to that particular collection center it cannot ensure quality of that particular product so what we have tried to do is we have tried to uh, to install a iot device which is nothing but a tab so uh, iot iot is also nothing but a but a uh, mechanism it, it is a mechanism where connected devices are available and basically the data can be uh, transferred uh, via internet so all these things which you could see the keyboard printer scanner rdu milk analyzer weighing scale all these were available in the non digitized uh, scenario also but there was no mechanism to transfer all uh, to basically connect all these data through iot device and to basically share this data to some uh, uh, to some server and then using this data to generate uh, uh, different insights so all these things were not available so what we we have done is basically we have we have uh, connected all these devices through a tab and what this tab is that this this tab is basically sharing data through our smart move uh, cloud and data and uh, cloud platform and and through this uh, once this data reaches the cloud then there are uh, there are already applications which are already installed in the cloud and they, what they does is they basically generate different reports they 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 generate quality and uh, quantity mismatch reports calibration reports uh, they also do the uh, uh, also do the ratings of different collection center so now it becomes extremely useful for the uh, dairy because now uh, the dairy can can monitor all uh, can monitor any any collection center in any part of this uh, of our country uh, so it it becomes easy for the uh, dairy to monitor these collection centers and once it is easy for the dairy to uh, to uh, monitor the collection center then dairy, dairy can take uh, steps uh, which are required for that particular collection center now i'll talk about how how basically i mean basically so okay i have told you all these things that uh, the device installation smart amq it is nothing but a hardware which is which is been uh, uh, installed at a, a collection center uh, the operator we usually uh, use this uh, uh, device to basically input all these uh, different data points 
so uh, before moving on to benefits i wanted to like highlight uh, a few things that at this point of time we are collecting a lot of data so farmer is basically visits the farm twice a day a uh, farmer uh, volume data is available farmer uh, uh, fat and snf which is the quality data is available a uh, farmer's uh, daily attendance is available so basically this uh, we are what we are trying to do is we are collecting a lot of data which is which is uh, which is associated with the farmer so this data it it is extremely useful when i talk about the value led services but since as i told you before also uh, first we need to uh, install the digital infrastructure because first if, if the digital infrastructure is there then only we are going to get data and then only we are going to leverage that data so as i told you smart amcu it is extremely useful uh, in 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 basically reducing the operational cost and in reducing the malpractices at the collection center and if if all these things are done then then basically it it benefits farmer also because he is the uh, he is the uh, main uh, uh, i mean beneficiary for this particular product so if farmer is is uh, is basically uh, getting good services it i mean they, then 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 there is an incentive for the farmer also to pour more milk and uh, and in in and in, in dairy if i talk about the dairy industry there uh, the demand is 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 very high basically uh, the dairies they they want milk because uh, the milk consumption in last few years it has actually uh, become 3x so the con consumption is increasing day by day so uh, it becomes extremely uh, critical that the dairy also uh, receives uh, uh consistently uh, milk from the farmers so these are the uh, uh, benefits of the smart amcu so i was talking about the collection center that wherein the uh, grading and paying of the milk is done uh these are some of the uh, uh, portal uh, portal snapshots which i have shared so all these details are uh, i mean the dairy can basically open this particular uh, uh, portal and they can track the Uh, track any particular chilling center and collection center they can see what is the total collection what is the average fetch fat and snf of the milk that has been collected uh, this is for nandini uh, what is the daily fat and daily uh, daily uh, snf uh, so so basically this is the first first product that we have launched in the market uh, before that also we 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 installed we deployed smart homes but uh, that was not scalable so uh, i mean you could say that our first product was the smart amcu it was launched in uh, 2013 2015 and then uh, then this is the our flagship product which we have almost sold it to more than 200 plus uh, dairy customers and it i think it is it is it has extremely benefited uh, the uh, dairy in terms of transparency now uh, i previously i was talking about the collection center now i'll move to the next node so of the supply chain which is the chilling center so uh, what is the function of the chilling center first so chilling center uh, as i told you milk is a perishable product uh, it needs to be chilled uh, as soon as possible uh, but uh, so so what happens is if if the chilling is not done properly then the uh, mbrt of the milk uh, is reduced then then the then it, then it may happen that the milk uh, get uh, is not useful for the dairy per se the quality of the milk deteriorates so what happens in a non digitized scenario is the bmc is there bulk milk chillers are, are available in the chilling center there is a operator also available in the chilling center but the same problem dairy does not know whether the operator is optimally using it or not dairy does not know whether uh, the whether when the when the milk has 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 reached uh, the chilling center what is the temperature and what is the temperature of the milk when it when it de gets delivered from bmc uh, or chilling center to the uh, uh, dairy processor so uh, the same problem they are not able to monitor they are not able to monitor the performance of that particular dairy and as i told you milk is a perishable product at temperature becomes 
extremely useful uh, temperature parameter is extremely useful for the uh, for the dairy and uh, and there are also other parameters which the uh, chilling center tracks so uh, the chilling center basically what it does is it basically monitors the temperature it monitors the uh, volume what is the volume in that particular uh, uh, chilling center uh, and and it also monitors the uh, dg and grid so since all these uh, all these bmcs are also available in the rural sector power management becomes uh, critical so if if the grid connection is not there then you will be using diesel and uh, with and you also are aware that diesel is a very costly fuel so uh, and uh, so if if the operator is not optimally using uh, the dg and grid if it is not optimally using the temperature <laughs> then then the same problem then the quality of the milk is getting destroyed as well as uh, the it is it is a cost to the dairy also right so what our product is does is we have what what tech, basically we have used sensors here also so we have uh, we have deployed temperature sensor we have deployed volume sensor a dg grid sensor all the sensors are available and they basically records the data and shares the data on a real time to the dairy and we also generate different analytics report for the dairy so what we are trying essentially trying to do here is we are trying to ensure that the transparency remains there the entire bmc get digitized and once the transparency is there now basically the dairy can take uh, effective steps so so in nutshell what we are trying to do is we are trying to digitize this node also and we are trying that uh, that that uh, the bmc remains optimally Uh, op there, there is optimal performance for the uh, for the BMC. So uh, our product name is Contract. Uh, so this is uh, nothing but uh, we are tracking the uh, particular BMC. So, so as I told you, uh, uh, there are uh, there are a lot of advantages uh, for the for this particular product. First in itself is the BMC shelf life. So BMC is nothing but a milk bulk milk cooler. that that basically chills the milk so if we are, if we are optimally using it then the shelf life of that particular uh, uh, particular uh, machine becomes high uh, milk quality uh, we can retain the milk quality uh, uh, if you are doing power management then then we are effectively uh, reducing the energy cost also so uh, uh, i mean what essentially we are trying to do here is we are trying to uh, digitize the entire supply chain we started with the productivity part wherein uh, we were doing we were uh, monitoring the uh, activity of that particular cattle and generating insights from that uh, and then we moved to the uh, collection center wherein we digitized the entire collection center and ensured that whatever grading and paying uh, has been done it is it is digitized and the same data is available uh, for the dairy and uh, then we move to the then milk basically moves to the chilling center same with chilling center also there also we are trying to digitize uh, the entire chilling center uh, node which in turn is going to like give, give more control to the dairy uh, so this is for uh, the chilling center contract device so here also uh, uh, if a dairy wants to see the milk volume for a particular chilling unit they can just open the portal and they can see for a particular bmc what is the chilling quantity what was the uh, when when did the uh, milk arrived mm -hmm. uh, what was the quantity of the milk at that point of time so various parameters are done this is this is literally the real time uh, doing so i mean yellow you could see that the volume of the milk so at 6 pm after 6:30 pm around uh, the milk volume has started uh, in the in the bulk milk cooler and the temperature of the milk you could see uh, the red one the line so basically it is nothing but the temperature of that uh, particular milk so the temperature you could see so it is getting reduced so when the milk came the temperature was around uh, uh, 30 degrees celsius so uh, after that uh, basically it, it it went to the uh, bulk milk cooler and there we are monitoring the milk and we are seeing that, that the milk has reached 4 degrees celsius it was there at 4 degrees celsius till 12:30 uh, pm so so essentially what we are trying to do here is we are we are basically uh, uh what we have done is we have 
uh, we have got our DAN network, digital access network there. And as you would have also uh, seen now that there are a lot of data which we are collecting now. So uh, as I have said, uh, as I have said that this DAN network it started from 2013 to 2015, and uh, from last uh, five seven years so we have collected a lot of data. So now what we are essentially doing is we are we using that particular data. We wanted to generate value added services for the uh, for the for all these stakeholders. So, uh, I mean, as you could see that there is a DA network which we have first started, and on top of that, what we have done is we have uh, we have uh, uh, we have collected a lot of data and, uh, and we have utilized that data to create different value added services. So, I'll briefly go one by one uh, to the uh, different services that we are providing. Uh, but I wanted to address one more uh, one more point. So uh, I mean, while, when we are starting this uh, presentation, I talked to you about the uh, uh, the issue that the Gita is facing. Gita is uh, she does not have access to formal uh, lending services. And if you don't have money, uh, then then how are you basically growing uh, going to uh, grow your uh, business? So for Gita, it becomes extremely. Uh, critical that uh, she gets the formal uh, lending services. Uh, even though the banks and payments banks all are available, but they also don't have access uh, of the farmers. They don't know the credit worthiness of that particular farmer. So in, in nutshell, it, is, it, is, uh, it was difficult for the uh, financial institutions to reach out to these farmers, as well as for the, direct, for the farmers also, it, it was uh, extremely difficult to basically uh, take services of these institutions. So what what essentially we have done is, uh, we, what we have prepared is we have pre we, since we are collecting a lot of data, what we have done is we have tried to evaluate the credit worthiness of the uh, of the farmer. Uh, now before going into into the details, I I wanted to uh, uh, explain uh, you this thing in a very simple way. So suppose uh, so so we all have civil score, right? Uh, we all take loans. Uh, we, we all have could have taken loans at particular point of time. We also nowadays we are doing UPI. All our all our all our transactions are are basically available uh, in 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 the digital platform. All these all these data is already aware uh, available in the uh, available for the financial institutions. So what this civil when uh, so basically the civil report is generated when civil what this civil report how this civil report is generated is. They basically collect these data uh, for for me for you and and based on that particular data, they give us some civil score, and based on the civil score, our credit worthiness is basically is being assessed. Now it is uh, because we live in urban India. I mean, all these uh, uh, digital infrastructure is available to us. All these services are available to us. But what about the farmer like Gita? Uh, isn't she credit worthiness? I mean, how? What are the parameters? Because she is not uh, uh, taking loans. Uh, she has not done UPI. She the, her her payment data is not available. So is it like that? She is not credit worthy. So what we try to do is I'll move to uh, the other slide and come back because I wanted to explain you this product Moose Code, which is the credit worthiness assessment for the farm. So what essentially we have done is. Uh, uh, as I told you that uh, we have collected a lot of data from collection center, uh, which is the farmer's uh, daily uh, attendance data, which is the farmer, uh, the quality of milk data. Uh, uh, the com uh, we can also compare this data, one farmer data with other farmer data. So all these alternate data points are available. So what we have tried to do is we have, we, we worked with one of the, uh, Leading analytics company Equifax, and uh, we partnered them, and we basically uh, partnered them to basically uh, develop this product. So, alternatively, we have tried to develop a, a alternate, uh, uh, you could say, a civil score for the uh, farmer. So, since all these all these data parameters are available, what we have done is we have we have uh, we have created new scores for all the farmers which are pouring from last one one and a half year. 
because the data has to be available for one year so that we can make it, make assessment for that particular firm. So once that uh, credit worthiness is being assessed, then basically, uh, so then basically uh, uh, the lending becomes easy, right? So we are we are we are already partnering with Jana Bank, uh, Airtel Payments Bank, Jana Jana Bank. They are already uh, giving us uh, giving the uh, loans to uh, the farmers. They are giving cattle loans to the farmers. They are uh, they are also we are also giving sachet loans for the farmers. So for a very I mean five to ten thousand loans, this is small ticket size is also being given to the farmer. So what essentially we have done is here is. We have tried. We have provided a uh, different uh, alternate uh, uh, data points for these banks. Now, now the question which suddenly ar could arise that, uh, I mean, is this moves go reliable? Is this moves go reliable? Are are banks going to uh, uh, give loans on the basis of this uh, particular uh, score? Uh, to be uh, true, uh, I mean. Uh, if I could say maybe, maybe not. So what we are doing here is we are basically the Jana Bank. They are also doing credit worthiness. We are just give shortlisting the uh, farmers based on Moody score, and we are giving the list to a list of these farmers to the uh, mm -hmm. banks, and they are also doing the credit worthiness uh, at their end, and then they are basically uh, lending to this farmer. And uh, currently uh, the NPA. For these, for almost all the farmers from last two years is zero. So almost all the farmers have uh, uh, paid their uh, session loans uh, to the uh, to the Jana Bank, and the cattle loans are, are also they are doing they are giving EMIs to the uh, banks. So basically, yes, uh, I mean you could uh, you could say that maybe at this point of time uh, the Moose score cannot replace Sibyl score for the rural India, but going forward as the as these uh, financial institutions. They, uh, it, uh, it, I mean, uh, the credit as as, the, as they use this moon score also in in term and plus with their credit worthiness, I think uh, the trust with this particular product will also increase. So what we have essentially tried to do here is we have used the, that particular data, we have done the analysis, we have utilized uh, the technology in terms of analytics, and then we have created one score, which is the uh, which is which is basically assessing the credit worthiness. So this is in nutshell our lending products, which wherein we from last two years we have uh, we have partnered with different banks and we have started uh, giving credit services to to the smallholder farmers like Kita. Uh, you would have also uh, I would I told you that uh, the collection center, apart from grading, they also pay the farmer. Now in the in a non digitized scenario, what happens is that particular. Uh, Collection, well, the dairy basically sends the cash to the uh, operator, and then operator has to give that money to the uh, farmer. But uh, as you could also sense that, uh, I mean, there are high chances of malpractices. Farm. Maybe the money is reaching farmer at time, the right time or not. Maybe he is giving, an, uh, 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 I mean, he is giving the money, uh, full money or not, or he is keeping something for himself or herself. So what we have essentially done is, since we have all the data available for the farmer, we have, uh, I mean, we have uh, through the API integration, uh, we have directly connected the farmer bank account with the bank. So now the dairy basically needs to put the money uh, to the bank in the bank account, not to the operator, and there directly uh, the uh, the money reaches the uh, farmer's bank account. So uh, this is how we have tried to do it. We are also doing it for insurance and banking services. But uh, I, I mean, insurance, I will basically explain you how we are doing it, uh, how we are basically working in that particular sector also. So this was the Moose score, uh, which, which I explained you. Uh, these are two parameters, two categorized parameters, the ability to pay, whether the farmer has ability to pay. And whether it has willingness to pay, whether whether the farmer is loyal or not, whether the cattle is in good health or not, all these data becomes critical to to access the uh, credit worthiness for a particular cattle. Uh, this is our dashboard for a for a particular farmer, wherein uh, this is for a pictorial uh, representation only. 
Uh, now uh, moving on to the uh, um, uh, the second product, which is Moa. It is nothing but the business insight. So as I've talked to you in different uh, nodes of the of the sub daily supply chain, we are generating analytics for daily processes. We are these in, we are we are basically generating uh, the quality reports to the uh, daily processor. We are generating volume reports. We are generating a mismatch between the collection center and the collection center uh, uh, chilling center reports. So what essentially we have tried to do is we have we have we wanted to uh, uh, share insights with the uh, dairy so that they can effectively make decisions, operational decisions at their end. Uh, so uh, what basically it becomes useful for dairy also because they now they can. Uh, because this farmer data is available now, they can see whether what is the farmer churn analysis for that particular uh, cattle. So, as I told you, uh, the milk uh, uh, there is a high demand for milk. So, and and the farmer is basically the owner of that cattle. So, then it becomes extremely useful, uh, extremely critical for the dairy that farmer uh, loyalty remains with the dairy. They will they should not switch from one dairy to another dairy, or they should not uh, stop pouring milk there. So now, because all these data points are available, uh, the dairies can ensure that there is transparency in the ecosystem. Basically, the there there are the high chances that the farmer loyalty remains with them. These are some of the uh, analytics report, wherein the uh, status of cow, the, what is the status of cow in their, uh, in their in that, that particular region? What is the AI efficiency? So so basically, different reports for different. Uh, I mean, different parameters has been shared with the dailies. Uh, so these are the. This is also uh, one interesting graph wherein we are showing uh, the fat and SNF quantity for uh, for the uh, Bihar Cooperative Organization. So you could see that uh, uh, I mean the quantity was one sixty four k in Muzaffarpur, and uh, the SNF was eight point four five. Uh, similarly, and the and the and the fat was uh, uh, five, right? So uh, I mean, the dairy basically now all see on see all these visualize all these things uh, in a centralized platform, and they can basically make effective decisions at their end. So these are some some these are all just reports. Uh, if you want, I will go through at the end of the. Uh, 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 Presentation. I actually wanted to talk about Moo KYC first. Uh, Moo Grow. Uh, this is the recent uh, uh, product in our uh, in, in our product line. So this is also uh, since uh, as I told you that we are collecting uh, farm side data also. Uh, the cattle health data is also available. So what we have done is we have basically partnered with the uh, with the leading cattle feed. Uh, uh, distributed trout nutrition and uh, and based, because since we have the data available health record productivity data milk quality milk quantity data we can uh, based on this data we can share the advisory with the farmer and we can also provide the cattle feed to the uh, farmer so all these facilities uh, we have tried to provide to to the farmers to the uh, to the ecosystem uh, so yeah, so I'll talk about uh, the uh, latest product that we have launched. Uh, it is it is basically the uh, uh, cattle recognition system. So uh, I mean, uh, so suppose uh, Aadhaar, we all have Aadhaar, right? We all have Aadhaar, we all have a unique uh, identity. Uh, but is there any unique identity available for cattle? You could say that the tagging solutions are there, uh, RFID tags are there, ear tags are there, all those physical tattooing is also done. But these are all ineffective uh, because uh, because there is also high chances that uh, the fraudulent uh, can happen. Uh, I mean, if I talk about the uh, uh, cattle insurance penet penetration, it is very less only because the insurance company, uh, they do not have control of the uh, claim settlement process. So when the claim settlement process comes, it, it becomes extremely difficult to 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 identify the right cattle. So we saw this uh, problem in the ecosystem that the insurance companies are facing, and uh, so we thought that since uh, we have a unique Aadhaar number, 
a digital uh, number can we also uh, uh, can we also develop uh, any digital uh, id for that particular cattle and how are we going to do this because the problem cattle identification problem was there uh, if you are not able to identify the right cattle basically uh, there are chances that you maybe you are not giving the ai to the right cattle maybe you are not uh, uh, doing the claim settlement for the, for a right cattle or if you are doing a trading for that cattle maybe uh, uh, you are not doing uh, the trading for that uh, particular right cattle so basically the trust part is not there i mean we wanted to ensure that uh, the cattle is uniquely identified and, then, and when there is a transaction going on in the ecosystem there there the trust is remains because of our product so, so what we have essentially tried to do is uh, we have uh, uh, we have tried to uh, to to basically digitize the physical tagging solutions so physical tagging solutions are available but if but i mean as i told you uh, there are a lot of issues with the uh, ear tags also right uh, so what we have essentially tried to do is we have tried to use the biometrics of that cattle Uh, to generate uh, the unique id for that particular cattle now i'll use an analogy uh, like for aadhar so we all have aadhar and uh, you remember that <coughs> when 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 our aadhar registration was happening we went to the aadhar center and uh, we gave our biometrics we we gave our retina scan and all other details are collected by the aadhar so basically they have collected all these details and they have generated a unique number for us now when you go to a bank basically all the numbers are authenticated and it becomes easy for the bank to get all the details for you similarly it becomes easy for insurance companies and other players also to basically identify you using a number so what we have tried to do here is the same thing we have collected the in uh, the biometrics of the cattle how we are doing it basically the biometrics of the cattle is nothing but uh, but uh, but uh, the muzzle print basically the uh, nose part of that particular cattle so uh, what we have essentially do did is we, we have used the uh, neural networks machine learning uh, algorithms to uniquely to, to uniquely register the cattle at our platform first and then basically to uh, to basically identify the cattle at, at that particular platform so uh, since uh, i mean uh, if you people know that uh, to basically train any machine learning model you first need our data since we have the data available uh, it it becomes useful for us that uh, that basically we have leveraged that particular image data and we have developed uh, uh, machine learning models so those models have been trained uh, and trained about the cattle biometrics so once uh, the model is trained and basically it, it it knows that this this particular muzzle is unique to basically muzzle is nothing but a combination of Beads, uh, beads, and ridges. So what a mo what what AI model does is basically it it uh, captures the information from the muzzle, which is beads and ridges, convert it into a vector form, and basically store it for a uh, I mean generates a unique ID for that particular cat. So this is how uh, we are basically uh, le uh, taking leverage of the uh, muzzle images. and uh, with the and using our machine learning uh, models to uniquely register the cattle and uniquely identify the cattle now uh, these are some of the images where uh, i mean we are trying to identify and register the cattle now uh, what are the use cases like uh, like uh, i mean is it is it uh, i mean how are we basically doing it how are we selling it so uh, we are all we are we are in talk with the tagging solutions companies so because there, there, there are some yeah there are some yeah. questions are there in chat window if it's possible you could address them uh, four five questions are there sure sure i think they'll post at the chat box sir the chat box is okay sir uh okay the third question Professor Sain, Sain. From Sain. Yes, sir. Sain, sir. So, once the analysis happens in the moon, so I'll, I'll basically talk about the uh, Sain's question first. Uh, yes. Sain's question is: These collection centers are run by government. 
to be available to certain daily supply chain that stellops need to get some kind of nice no so uh, these collection centers uh, so basically you are talking about the cooperatives right these cooperatives are run uh, run by bureaucrats in some cases the ias uh, are the uh, are the mds of these particular uh, uh, cooperatives so what essentially we does is we we reach out to the md which is the ias we we propose our solution to them and uh, we we basically uh, tell them the the significant value which we are generating for for the dairy as well as for the farmers so just to tell you we are available for nandini as i told you nandini is nothing but a cooperative uh, and we are also doing it for uh, bihar cooperative organization so nothing no kind of special license or permission is required i mean cooperatives are also client to us so there are two types of clients for us so one is the cooperative and the other is the uh, private dairies okay so uh, this is a good question so basically uh, what sayyad is asking is uh, once the analysis uh, happens then Uh, how it is <laughs> translated to uh, the uh, action points and uh, how basically the farmer reads it so a uh, farmer is not reading the, all these points basically these are these these uh, suppose if i talk about the productivity data the, the cattle, uh, farm side data so if we are collecting the ai data vaccination data you know these data basically are critical for the uh, veterinary doctor and for the dairy now they know that uh, this particular cattle needs to be vaccinated they basically sms the farmer that this needs to be done and they basically with uh, nudges that particular farmer and then they take action so the basically the action item is not on farmer it is it is on dairy it is on on the various uh, dairy agents like veterinary doctor and nutritionist all which are there which are which are providing the extension services to the farmer uh another question so what is what is kind of tech intervention deploy at the milk analyzer touch point uh, as it's been how tempering mal practices is provided do you also have mechanism incorporate to change between a one to so uh, to answer your second question no we we are not uh, 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 we are not uh, categorizing milk into a1 and a2 although it is pretty easy because the a2 a2 uh, milk is nothing but the uh, all the milk that is being collected from the from our ac grade is a 2 milk proper a2 milk so we are not doing it at this point of time for any any particular customer because the request has not come uh for what is the technology uh, how are how are we basically reducing the man practices so as i told you uh, i mean there there was no monitoring for that particular uh, collection center now if you if someone is not monitoring you if there is no then there are there are chances that the mal practices could happen right what essentially we have done is we whatever date whatever milk is coming to that all the parameters associated with that milk whether the volume of the milk is there uh, whether uh, whether the quality of that milk is there what is the payment that needs to be given for a particular uh, fat and as snf all these all these details are centrally available with the dairy now dairy knows that what needs to be paid to the farmer now dairy knows how that particular uh, collection center is working in terms of quality and quantity so it is nothing but what we have done is we have digitized the entire collection center and we have shared uh, uh, the insights from that data to that particular uh, uh, dairy so this is how uh, we are ensuring that uh, that the transparency reveals and, uh, and and basically the mal practices reduces uh what is the turn around time for dairy farmers between asking for loan based on new score and lending institution okay so uh, <coughs> there are two parts to it uh, one is the sashay loan so our sashay loan partner is happy loans uh, basically this is a different lending uh, nbfc so uh, uh, basically they they give loan uh, within 24 to 48 hours so sashay loan uh, uh, sashay loan it, it, it the turn around time is very less but for cattle loan uh, it depends on jana bank so now we have partnered with jana bank they have their own processes so what we have tried to do from our end is we have tried to uh, we basically because in new score data it is readily available to us 
so we all these details are shared with the uh, with the uh, partnered bank but then the uh, bank also takes some time from there and it could be a two to three week time uh, i mean generally so uh, this is how basically the turn around time is 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 not much uh, what we are trying to address here is we are trying to uh, share the credit worthiness of that particular uh, farmer with the uh, with the uh, partnered bank uh uh thank you um, mr dhirendra thank you for answering my questions I, i'm able to get the idea thanks okay okay, okay i think ganesh uh, yeah you can do sir can you carry on sir just skip. okay okay uh good that uh, these questions are coming uh, because because i also know that uh, uh we have came up with a lot of products and because uh, i mean as you also know that the uh, if you wanted to deploy technology at uh, the rural level you first need to understand whether that digital infrastructure is there or not so our our founders they because they are from it wipro they are all ex wiproids they wanted to use uh, to do the uh, use the uh, leverage the data but what happens is uh, the data you first need to get the data So that's why we came up with different hardware products we have deployed these products in, across india and uh, we have collected data from 4 5 uh, for 4 5 years we have made uh, relations with the dairies and once that is done then we are then we are basically now leveraging this data and and giving uh, data led services like moo score moo grow moo opt and and this is moo id moo kyc so uh, um, going back to the uh, mu kyc part so uh, what essentially we are trying to do is we are trying to solve the problem of cattle identification uh, we wanted to keep it as simple as as, as an aadhaar so that uh, it becomes easy for the uh, insurance company also to like see whether because one because if we, what we have done we, we have just provided an application to the uh, end user Uh, end user means uh, the tagging solution tagging agent which basically goes there or veterinary doctor which goes there at the time of claim settlement so at the time of claim settlement they need to identify the cattle so what what uh, in 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 uh, what generally happens is they just capture the image and the veterinary doctor says that this particular cattle uh, is this cattle and uh, and and uh, basically generates a death uh, post mortem report of that particular cattle now as an insurance company uh, they are not sure whether uh, the right cattle has been identified or so 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 what we have essentially tried to do is we have also here we have tried to uh, uh, digitize this node of this particular uh, supply chain what uh, now the insurance company uh, insurance companies uh, now they have access for the to the claim settlement uh, process in itself so now they can see in their portal whether uh, whether that particular cattle is right or not uh, what was that cattle what are the different parameters associated with cattle and uh, going forward we will be integrating this product with the muon muon application also wherein the cattle all health related data is available so that that is also going to help the insurance companies in developing such uh, in developing the Uh, i mean you could say a good uh, insurance product because it may happen that a insurance product created for dhirendra may not be useful for geeta and insurance companies because they don't have data they don't uh, they don't have access to large quantity of data they are even not sure whether the how i mean what type of insurance product needs to be created for geeta what uh, needs to be created for dhirendra so uh, we are trying to take uh, leverage of uh, of the data to basically generate value that services for the uh, farmers so as i told you uh, i mean uh, it has its application in insurance industry herd management uh, we uh, we also got uh, queries from argentina wherein uh, the cattle trading uh, happens so uh, uh, one of the leading company wants this solution to like uh, Build trust between farmers and themselves. So these are some of the images from the field where our field uh, uh, field agents are basically uh, utilizing this uh, these products. 
so uh, in nutshell i just wanted since i gave you a timeline or of, of our company also we at in 2013 we found we were founded in 2011 2013 we we, we started working on cold chain part and uh, once this customer acquisition is done once we are able to get the data then after 2018 we we jump to the uh, different data led services so this is the uh, so we are currently providing services to 200 uh, dairy processors uh, daily 10 million milk liters of milk is is, is basically flow uh, flow through our system 10 million milk almost 1 crore liter of milk is which is basically flowing through our systems uh, on a daily basis almost 3 million dollars payments of that worth of milk is been done uh, this the blue part on the left side we are we are available uh, almost everywhere where you can see the blue part so uh, uh, going forward uh, uh, we are planning to leverage our data led services and uh, trying to create a deep social impact uh, for the daily supply chain so uh, i hope uh, that uh, you are also in, in this journey with us i hope that daily digitization can solve the problems of the daily sector so uh, this is the uh, short presentation i should not say short but this is a presentation from our end i hope uh, that you are uh, able to get uh, uh, the If you are able to understand the pain points at different nodes of supply chain, and you are also able to like grasp how we are leveraging the technology, how we are using the IoT to digitize the supply chain, and how we are basically crunching that data to generate analytics and using artificial intelligence. How we are basically providing data-led services to the uh, end users. Uh, am I too? Okay, I think uh, uh, we can use this time to a uh, question and answer. Yes, yes, yes. Any question yes. from participant? I uh, can discuss with him. Uh, our uh, uh, yeah, yeah, hi, Devendra. Uh, one one more question I have. Um, see, for example, uh, now because you have done mostly like a like a B two B, right? In the sense. Um, is it any any stellar apps plan? Is there to uh, introduce? dairy products directly to the customer in the sense because that is the only thing which is kind of pending right uh, if you see from the other network which you have which you have already established so is is still apps looking at like something like a moo milk sort of thing where even the it will reach the final customer so do you have any your company has any kind of plan on that thank you yes sir that's a very very good question that you have asked so uh, because there are a lot of products which i wanted to discuss in this particular uh, session so i i have not discussed about uh, this particular aspect of uh, the supply chain yes we have a subsidiary called moomark which we have launched uh, uh, last year and uh, we are available uh, we are we have partnered with bill and melinda gates foundation and uh, they have funded us to to basically create our moomark brand and all and utilize because what happens is here uh, uh, not every customer is going to use all the products right and if you are not uh, digitizing the entire supply chain maybe you are not able to uh, create that deep social impact that we are trying to do maybe some customer are using smart amc because they wanted to digitize the collection center they wanted to ensure that the uh, collection center is running well maybe they are not interested in in, in using our activity uh, so uh, tracking cattle activity tracking solutions so what we have tried to do is we have we have developed our moomark brand which is working in kolar and varanasi cluster and we are we are daily collecting uh, 50000 plus liters of milk from these two facilities and this milk is sold to businesses currently we are not we have not created any consumer brand we are we are providing this uh, milk to the uh, dairies only so there are a lot of dairies which which requires quality milk there are a lot of fmcg brands like itc or nestle which which basically develops uh, quality uh, milk which needs good quality uh, so suppose nestle is preparing a milk chocolate so for a milk, good milk chocolate you need a high uh, fat snf milk so we are taking care of this thing we are we are testing our products in our facility itself so yes we have started this uh, this uh, 
I mean, in the Moomark brand also, but we are not there. Uh, we are not selling it to consumer. We are selling the milk to the uh, uh, and dairy processors. Thank you. Those are all really amazing steps you are taking. Thank you. Yeah, any other question from anybody? Uh, Ganesh Kulkarni, participant, can you have any question? Ganesh Kulkarni, sir, Indra, Madam, Ashok, sir. Any question from your side? Yeah. Uh, sir, I have, I, I have one question. Uh, see, what are the issues we are facing in this uh, digitalization uh, supply chain? What are the, uh, say, uh, based on the issues, uh, what are the future research as a faculty member we can take it? Any thoughts on this? Uh, so existing, uh, you are doing a lot of you know, digitalization with the different uh, dairy farm and cooperatives. What are the issues you are facing uh, in terms of data or any other issues? Uh, based on this, what kind of research we can take it as a faculty member? Any thought on this, Diretra? Oh, okay. Uh, I think uh, uh, the issues which we are facing uh, is one, it is, it is basically, uh, those are operational issues because okay. if you're working in the rural India, it, the maintenance uh, and support becomes, uh, becomes critical because, and that is also a cost to companies. So since we, since we wanted to leverage technology, we, we also need to make sure that the business remains sustainable. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it should not happen that uh, we are digitizing, but we, but the business is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what happens is this ecosystem, as I told you, uh, I mean, there, there was no technology which they, these guys are using before Stellabs. So what mm -hmm. essentially we have done is first we have introduced our uh, uh, digital, uh, I mean, hardware products. Uh, so when we introduced our hardware product, we thought that uh, maybe we'll be uh, paid for our cloud services also for our analytics also. But uh, previously what used to happen is, uh, I mean, these cooperatives, uh, mostly cooperatives were our uh, clients at the, uh, previously. They, they, they uh, I mean, there was not willingness to pay for, uh, for, for these services, software services. So uh, first it becomes extremely critical to, to first test this product with some of the private uh, clients and then basically push it to them. But uh, I mean, uh, this is a still a, a problem for us. I mean, we are slowly, slowly we are we are uh, giving value proposition for the clients for the cloud-led services. So this is one thing that uh, uh, that we are facing. But in terms of what faculty needs to do researches, uh, currently I'm working on uh, 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 on on this MOOC KYC product, wherein we are basically capturing the biometrics of that particular cattle and uh, we are trying to uh, uh, predict whether whether uh, whether the cattle a whether the cattle is uniquely identified or not what what faculty can do is uh, if they want because there is also one thing which we are doing which is age verification mm -hmm. now uh, age verification how would an insurance company know the age of that cattle who is going to verify the age of that cattle uh, I mean, in the ecosystem, it, this question is there, but uh, I think it is it becomes extremely difficult for anyone to answer what is the age of the particular cattle at that particular point of time. So when I was going through the uh, veterinary science so for that particular cattle, I observed that uh, on the basis of the size and the shape of the teeth of the cut cattle, we may predict the uh, age of the cattle. So that is something uh, which is in pipeline. Uh, maybe we'll be doing it if we, if we get the good results. But I think this is one point if, if someone can leverage the technology to predict the age of the cattle. So then it becomes extremely useful for the dairy also and for insurance uh, companies also that uh, they know the age of the cattle. Now it, it now it is just that farmer says that age is two years, two years, one year. And then somebody says six years, six years. I'm not asking to predict the age in, in terms of like uh, exactly age, but if you can give a bracket of age, whether the cattle is one year to one and a half year, two year to two and a half year, if we are able to predict uh, the age of the uh, cattle using uh, the uh, uh, teeth images or using the uh, machine learning models, then I think uh, uh, this will generate uh, value to at least the insurance companies. Okay.
Uh, okay, thank you. And uh, one more question. See, uh, you were directly uh, giving the service to the cow, cow uh, owners or something. You directly give the service to the uh, cooperatives or dairy. The dairy will take care of their uh, you know, uh, supplier. Maybe if you have one cow, two cow, they will implement. Okay, so uh, if I have the uh, two cows, how to link in your uh, Stella supply chain? Whether I have to directly have to approach you or I have to go to the cooperatives <laughs> and they will take care of this you know, linkage. Okay. The solution is sold to the dairy. Dairy, okay. So, uh, now, yeah, so basically these farmers are associated with dairy. They are registered for okay. ESA, Nandini or for Amu, you could say. Mm -hmm. So if they are registered to uh, Nandini now. So now, it, basically as I told you, okay. the cattle. Now okay. for dairy, the asset is the cattle. Dairy basically is more concerned about the farmer. That because they need milk to basically supply it to meet demands. So basically, these products are sold to dairy, and dairies uh, they because they have their own extension services, field officers which are there in the field. So these applications, move on application, hard management solution, they are provided to to these users, and these users basically reach out to farms and they onboard the uh, two kettles of yours uh, in the field. Okay, the payment also as a cow farmer, I know I have to pay anything to this one for using the veterinary doctor services. Or any other, you are giving a lot of services, right? Any amount I have to pay to the cooperatives as a farmers or uh, the cooperatives directly will pay to you? Um, now, it, it basically, now it, it's, 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 it depends on the relationship uh, between the dairy and the uh, farmer. Okay. So, okay. Uh, I mean, for if you are, if, if, if there is a nutrition advisory, I could say in the current scenario, uh, the nutrition advisory will be free from almost all the customers, okay. right? But what what cattle feed needs to be taken then uh, i think uh, maybe dairy can provide a loan to the cattle if the uh, farmer if it is not able to buy or the farmer if, if if he has money he can basically direct directly go to the collection center and buy the cattle feed from there so collection center is 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 a place where you can basically do banking there you mm -hmm. can do grading and paying there you can sell your cattle feed also there so uh, basically for this uh, i mean if the farmer uh, needs to buy the cattle feed he can directly buy it he needs to pay for that okay okay if i am the cooperative i have a uh, uh, hundred uh, no cows uh, supplier how much cost i have to pay what will be the your product cost for uh, mm -hmm. hundred uh, what will be the pricing you uh, know framework for stella for cooperatives how much the cost normally uh, so different products are different pricing uh, idea. yeah yeah so uh, basically uh, i mean uh, even I think different different clients have different uh, okay, uh, okay, pricing okay. because mm -hmm. the scale of the cattle is also different. And okay. as I told you, I mean, for, for most of the services, we are not upfrontly asking money for it. We okay. are doing it on, on, on per cattle basis, but I wanted to show you. Okay, okay. I think I don't have the data available at this point of time, the costing data. Okay. But uh, how Probably the, can tell you some idea because uh, we want to know because uh, general perception about this technology is be costly. Uh, some even uh, we have some uh, presentation by TraceX and Parcel. They were charging based on acre one day, one year subscription. The, the cost was less, so you'll get some idea. Uh, so, so suppose for if I explain you for our Moo KYC product, which is okay. the cattle uh, identification. So mm -hmm. there's an upfront cost that you are go going to ask for a customer. So it could be a one million also. Because uh, since we did this product is in nascent stage, we are just uh, 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 launched the product in the market. So I'm giving you uh, uh, a round of figures, uh, approximate figures. Suppose uh, if, if for 20,000 uh, uh, cattles, if, if you want to like tag 20,000 cattles, uh, you, we, we are asking for upfront cost, which is some suppose like 1 million. Mm -hmm. And then, and then they are there are connectivity charges also because every time you are doing the registration, you can okay. get ten rupees also, fifty rupees also. So, uh, so basically, uh, there is one one upfront cost component is there, and then uh, for some of the products now we are we are also charging for the uh, software services, but uh, it is it is on per cattle basis. Uh, per cattle. Mm -hmm. Thank you for input. Is there some more questions in the chat? Please? Questions in chat box, please. Uh, okay. Do you have, uh, uh, there's a question from. 
Kalai Selvi, Dr. Kalai Selvi. Do you have cattle image database for tour AI system? Yes, we have the cattle image database uh, system. Uh, we have now started collect because as I told you, uh, I mean, if you want to develop any machine learning model, you first need to train that model, right? That model needs to understand that these are the legs of the cattle, this is the, this is the mouth of the cattle, this is the muzzle of the cattle. So you need you first need a, a cattle a da image database. You need to basically train that uh, data, uh, train the the, uh, the model using this database, and then once the machine is getting trained with lot of uh, data, then basically uh, the accuracy uh, comes in picture. So yes, uh, to answer your question, yes, we, we have this database. Uh, how many types of data taken from sensors, uh, which platform? So basically, uh, uh, as I told you, uh, we are collecting, uh, we are using temperature sensor, we are using volume sensor. Uh, we are also uh, are trying to, we are basically tracking the activity of the cattle using these sensors. So we are using sensors uh, in contract also, and we are using such sensors in one device also. Uh, any research area in this? Uh, this is a research area, as I told you. Uh, I mean, the, the problem which which I can see, which I am working on, is the age verification part. I think, uh, um, I mean, if we club this particular thing, if we can somehow uh, able to predict the age of the cattle, then becomes uh, critical for some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, businesses like insurance. Uh, I mean, they can use that data to further use it for, for their purpose. Uh, can we use AI? This is a question from Sandbo. Uh, can we use AI blockchain for tracking wild animals movement in the villages? Uh, suddenly, I mean, in concept, it is possible. It is it is possible, but, uh, but as I told you, uh, I mean, uh, how are you going to monitor it? Like, uh, I mean, if through activity meter you can do it, but then you need uh, uh, then you need uh, infrastructure in the uh, forest, right? You can put an activity meter uh, for the uh, for the cattle. Suppose I, I give you, I'll give you an example. So uh, in the tiger reserves, I, I belong to Madhya Pradesh. There are a lot of tiger reserves here. So uh, and, and there is a collar uh, collar uh, something which has been attached to tiger. And uh, I think the technology that is used is not AI blockchain. I think they are using RFID or not. But certainly, uh, I mean, it is possible. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, these guys, uh, some of uh, the researchers, may be working on this. But currently, I don't think the AI blockchain is getting used in the, uh, in the forest. They are using some RFID mechanism. Even I am not sure about that. Uh, I think any any other questions? Some other Kuldeep mentioned so age verification model as a research area. Yeah. Yes. Any other question from a participant? If you have, we can ask for to Tirinda. Sir, I have one question, sir. See, if you look at dairy dairy industry. Most of the people who are coming for dairy industry, uh, they will start, uh, they will see two, two, maybe three months or four months. Most of the people, they said they may get loss. They're going to wind up. So what is main uh, reason, sir, since you're working at this place now for dairy, okay. dairy that's, that's a good question. lack of management or what? <laughs> Profitability. So basically you are saying that uh, even though uh, dairy demand is there, even though uh, milk... Uh, Milk demand is almost available. Consumption has increased, but if you if you try and uh, set up a dairy farm, uh, it is not profitable, right? Uh, you are right. Uh, it is. It, it, I mean, in most of the cases, it is not profitable. In India, it becomes extremely difficult because these small older farmers these have two to four uh, cattle. So the herd size is very small. Uh, at the same time, they do not have credit facilities. But suppose you have all these facilities available, then then it becomes extremely critical to take. Take care of the productivity of the cat. You, uh, I mean, if, if this this uh, business we are also doing it, we have launched our uh, um, brand Moomark uh, subsidiary for this. 
you need to ensure that the productivity remains there. The cattle, uh, the cattle's health is regularly monitored because the asset here is the cattle. Yes, right? uh, If you are able to take care of this, at uh, the, the asset, if, suppose it is giving five liters of milk. If, if you are providing uh, preventive health care, if you are providing uh, good cattle feed to the cattle, that five is going to turn into ten. Same business is profitable in in United States, in New Zealand, in in. in in the Netherlands, their their a significant portion of their GDP is coming from the dairy industry itself. Reason being, uh, first is the weather itself. Second is the uh, the cattle feed which these guys are providing. At the same time, the herd size for a farm is hundred plus. Now, it, if you if you have hundred plus size cattle and if you have all these services available, then it becomes operationally uh, it becomes easy for you to get the profits. But if you are doing it for two to four cattle. Uh, uh, then the because the margin size is very low in this industry, uh, it is it is it is it is a game of volumes. So if you have volume, then only go you are going to earn from milk. I'm talking about liquid milk. So if you if you wanted to earn from a liquid milk, then you need to get volumes in this business. See, if you look at DPS, they represented profit mode everything. See, let like take example of fifty uh, buffaloes or hundred buffaloes, whatever, maybe cow or buffalo, whatever it is. They usually present in DPR profit mode. So they have a demand, everything is available. But once into the execution, operational process, they will go for three months, four months. After that, they'll go wind up, they'll tell only one reason, we are not executing. We are not you know, due to lack of labor, lack of other factors that are mentioned. Uh, sir, still, could you, you, could you please repeat your question? I, I think See, question is, some people, what I have seen, Mm -hmm. Or maybe XYZ dairy, they started with the capacity of 100 uh, buffaloes. Mm -hmm. Dairy, we started. So, the question is they will start in DPL, mm -hmm. detail uh, project report. They mentioned with 100 uh, buffaloes, uh, they are going to be producing every day this many liters. They have a market, they have a model attached with the uh, portals, attached with other uh, people. Everything on paper is good. Once come into the execution part, they will do three, four months done, sir. After three, four months, they'll go wind up. See, why we said, why you are wind up, we lost. They'll tell only one reason. We are not able to execute due to labor uh, issues, due to other factors. Right. Many uh, cases, we have seen many cases in uh, here. So, uh, when I'm talking about volume, I'm, I'm talking about large amount of volume. I'm not talking about a 50,000 liter or... or, or yes, yes. Basically, these cooperatives, the big cooperatives, they basically collect almost one crore liter or more than one crore uh, liter of milk every day. When I'm talking about specifically about 100, uh, 100 uh, buffalo cattle, uh, I mean, it is a very labor intensive uh, one. Yes. Right? Yes. And, uh, and if you wanted to uh, ensure that the productivity is there, then you need to make uh, a lot of investments. So, what usually happens is people, even though they they collect uh, 100 buffaloes, right? There are farms which which have 100 buffaloes, even though they are, I mean, not profitable or uh, significantly the number of cattle that we get reduced because the preventive healthcare facility is not available. Okay. Veterinary doctor goes, uh, I mean, you cannot expect a veterinary doctor to just see and, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, analyze the cattle. You need some mechanism. You so suppose, so suppose I'm talking about the move-on product person. So if this if this product is available for a veterinary doctor who is looking after the hundred cattle, it becomes easy for him to uh, provide preventive health care. It becomes easy for him to to predict AI if he, if, he, if it has uh, the uh, activity meter, right? Yes. So uh, I mean, for a hundred cattle farm, I think uh, I mean whatever products we are facing, we are providing uh, most of the products will not be suitable for them but they can certainly use our uh, uh, move on application move on uh, hard management solution and, uh, and the uh, activity tracking so that is something that uh, that they can use uh, i i think maybe in future they we are also going to get uh, some farms of that, that size also currently we are doing it for the dairies thank you sir. i think one question from uh, side sir Yes, sir. 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 Y
chat box. Okay, okay. Can you please mention publicly available dairy farm data set? Uh, uh, you can get the livestock data from livestock. Uh, I think there is livestock, livestock consensus which has happened. So I think you can get that data from there. NDDB has a lot of data. So you can visit the NDDB site and you can get the, uh, because they generate the uh, uh, dairy reports for, the, for state wise. So I mean, you can collect data from there. NDDB is one source where you can get a lot of data. Uh, Sayyad's question is, uh, is your Stellup solution has reduced the time between a milk is obtained at the kettle end and milk get delivered to the customer? Uh, yes. Yes, it has certainly uh, reduced this time. Because previously what used to happen is uh, the kettle, now the milk is there in the uh, collection center, uh, right? Uh, the milk is, uh, I mean, it is available, but nobody is basically sending out their milk to the collection center. Now, because the, now dairy knows, dairy knows that the, this much milk has been collected in that particular collection center. It is there, available there. Now they can basically take steps to be, uh, to ensure that the milk has reached to chilling center. And, and once the milk is getting chilled, once it has reached an optimal temperature, then also uh, the dairy can basically take steps and ensure that, that the one, that the ones that Chilling uh, the milk is the chill the milk chill the milk is available there they can basically transport that milk to the chilling center. Suddenly dairies dairies have taken uh, they have used these uh, the data led services to make uh, to to basically make effective decision making and ensure that the uh, right milk is reaching to them at right and basically in, in shorter duration. Oh, thank you thank you very much for the for the answer. Uh, one more small question. See do do you also thinking of uh, diversifying uh, towards goat milk and other things apart from just the dairy? Uh, uh, certainly, uh, I mean, at this point of time, we are not looking into uh, goat, at least uh, because uh, at least not with the current set of uh, products which we have, right? But uh, as I have said, if there is, because see, uh, if there is a demand, if there is a demand in the uh, industry, then only the pro uh, solution is going to solve it basically come in picture or generate value. So if there is a demand for uh, goat industry, goat rearing industry, uh, I think uh, we may go, but not, uh, I don't think not with the current, uh, current set of uh, product line which we have. We may use a cattle identification system because the muzzle print, it is, it is, it is for all the bovine, it is the biometrics. For goat also, it is a biometric. So maybe I think a Moo KYC product, Moo KYC is nothing but Moo KYC means know your cattle. So uh, I think this product has, uh, um, it could be used uh, in, in some uh, goat rearing farms also. And uh, who is going to be your, your major competitor? I mean, if you see it. Um, um, you're talking about, so basically different products are different uh, competitors. So in the hardware segment, uh, precision uh, is there. Uh, basically, they are uh, they are also providing uh, these uh, hardware services to the uh, uh, to the uh, different dairy dairy companies, but nobody is providing the uh, data led services. Nobody is generating basically generating the insights uh, for the dairy processors. So this is something which we are only doing it. We are the only dairy technology company available in, in India, uh, and as I told you. Uh, uh, I mean, you could ask that why these other guys are not doing it. The reason being, as I told you, the ecosystem does not pay you for software-led services. There, there is a, uh, I mean, uh, resistance uh, from uh, from from these stakeholders. So, what we have tried to do is we have tried to uh, make it sustainable. We have tried to uh, engage different different partners. So as you would have uh, seen in this presentation also, we are not only dealing with dairies, we are dealing with, uh, we are dealing with banks also. We are dealing with insurance companies also. So we are, we, we basically, we have provided a platform to all these stakeholders also that you come and do business here. Uh, we, we, uh, you can do business in the dairy segment also. This is something which no, no one is doing at this point of time. Yeah, that's a great, great thing you have done. And actually, I mean, this, this company really, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much for your answer. So some questions at chat box. 
Yeah, what is sensor data is process software uploading to cloud by Ramesh sir. Sensor data is processed after uploading to cloud. <coughs> yes. Yes, okay. Second. Sir, uh, this, hello. This is Ramesh, it's here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, sir, yeah. sir uh, the, actually, I the technical part of it, like uh, not only sensor, all the data which is collected, uh, is it centrally processed or? Uh, Yes, yes. Uh, so basically, different instances uh, are given to different customers. So, uh, so basically, all these data is crunched uh, on the cloud. Are you using Python, sir? Python for processing this data, Python software, or any other software? Uh, sorry. Data, data analytic, machine learning, and deep learning processing. Yes, yes. Python. Yes. So we are using uh, Python to generate different reports. Okay. So there are already uh, the script which has been written and which has been uploaded uh, to the uh, cloud. So once the data is received, basically that script runs and uh, automatically uh, the report is generated and is available to the portal. So we have tried to automate everything. As I told you, uh, the, the ecosystem does not uh, pay you that much. I mean, if you talk about other industries, so what we have tried to do is we have tried to automate uh, everything so that uh, the, uh, the these reports are available to them and it is also become sustainable for us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, I, I also have another question is that, uh, for example, if uh, my relative want to establish a diary or he want to expand, then the company will uh, help uh, or? Definitely, uh, Definitely. We, we will help you with the, uh, by digitizing the uh, solution. So we are in business of digitizing the solution. We are not in the business of creating farms, creating a smart farms. But uh, yes, if you have a dairy available, if you are collecting milk from uh, farmers or Kaham collection center or chilling center, then we can come with our set of products and we can digitize that uh, uh, that particular uh, node in your supply chain. Yes. One more last question uh, from Secretary Wilson. Any milk producer? Thank you, sir. Amul, mother dairy, Avin. I've implemented this technology. Yeah. SAR was mentioned more than 200. Uh, Almost all. We have 200 plus uh, dairy processor which are using this uh, technology. 200 plus dairy, I I think maybe we are, uh, most of us are aware of only four or five brands. But uh, um, I mean, uh, to be frank, it is 250 plus. Uh, so uh, almost all, all the dairy which you can talk of, uh, they are uh, one or the other way they are associated with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dhirindra, sir. Uh, it's fine. Where do you go, sir? Sir, thank you, sir. On behalf of uh, FDP, really a nice session, sir. It's informative. Hope all people also, maybe participants also, enjoyed a lot. I think they got it. Whatever, uh, no, they have uh, issues or whatever doubts they clarified. Really, how you started dairy supply chain uh, concept, how you show the cases with the sample of milieu, photography, how your company is, you know, Modelizing the digitalizing the dairy industry, how you are supported for dairy industry also well, sir. And of course, how your quality production, how uh, the, the traceability, the digitalization of the dairy industry, maybe definitely will be useful for dairy industry. We hope we'll get more and more <coughs> development we can see in dairy industry in India. Thank you, sir, on behalf of our once again FTP team. And of course, uh, we will have more collaboration for further research studies also with the IAPM. And, we, and of course, we'll have any uh, like uh, training programs also. We are happy to invite you, sir. Please come and associate with us. Sure. And, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Nice. Uh, just the session was very nice, quite nice. Uh, thank I you, also sir. wanted to thank the IIPM uh, for giving us the platform to, uh, to basically discuss all these use cases. So, uh, I mean, we are in the business of creating a deep social impact. That's why we are we are, we are also associated with Gates Foundation and other foundations, uh, other in financial institutions which are working in creating this uh, deep social impact. Thanks for providing this, uh, the audience, because uh, I mean, I have also discussed with Ganesh before, the kind of audience uh, which you guys have provided, uh, I mean, because we now, whatever uh, problems which we have faced and whatever solutions, what our understanding, of, we have basically showcased, showcased this, into now because you are all researcher uh, i'm sure that you would also be thinking in, in terms of like how to leverage this technology and 
now we have implemented it i am sure that that would have given confidence to other stakeholders also that that this is possible it is not like the rural infrastructure is not there so we will not be using uh, uh, doing the digitization i think uh, uh, thanks for providing me the audience uh, which is there and for the platform uh, which you guys have given thank you sir thank you very much thank you. Thank you, Dhirendra. I'll keep in touch with you. We'll uh, support the discussion on the uh, any features. Sure. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah, we'll uh, spend some time with the audience, and uh, okay. this will then will be right. Uh, sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah. So um, afternoon session, uh, I'll be handling uh, machine learning and some session using Google Collab. Um, the crop in session will postpone to. Uh, Tomorrow, so tomorrow oh, morning session will be handled by uh, first uh, 10 to 11. I, uh, please check your chat window. I'll share that uh, link also. The first session at uh, 10 to 11 will be handled by um, Satsu Pradeep uh, on satellite data report searching for precision agriculture. And then uh, uh, you can check the chat window, sir. Uh, and second session will be handled uh, again 11 15 to 12 15 by cropping uh, by Praveen. So you will talk about crop in AI and remote sensing for environmental and uh, sustainability. So uh, here's some issue with the crop in. Uh, so uh, afternoon session, I will handle. Okay, so we'll use some Google Collab. Uh, we'll try to take data from Kaggle and we'll predict the price, uh, quality of the wine. Okay, I'll share the data set. So we'll discuss in the afternoon session. Okay, uh, you please check your chat window. So please understand as per the schedule, afternoon is crop in. Crop in is coming uh, tomorrow morning. So the afternoon session, I will be handling uh, machine learning application using Google Collab. So we'll be using wine uh, data set and try to apply some machine learning model, random forest model or some other model we'll try to learn. Okay. I think hands and training only. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. hands and training. Okay. Uh, sir, I, I can't see yeah. the feedback form. Could you share the feedback form? It's already done and just check it in the time to share it, sir. Please check the chat video. If it is not getting a current message, go to no, the Fifth or sixth time. Okay, is it fine for any clarification? Anything? Okay, so uh, please afternoon try to use laptop. Uh, I'll be sharing some data set. We'll try to use Google Collab. Uh, you just you need a Gmail account. So from that we can use it. Uh, uh, Google Collab. Yeah, two to four. Sir. Afternoon session two to four. Only morning we have changed ten thirty to twelve thirty because we had some function here every day function. So time, sir, as is well now. Uh, as sharp as two o'clock, we will start. Two to four. Yeah, by, by 4 p.m. Yes, yes. yes. So try to be uh, maintain uh, timing. Uh, yeah. Because since uh, AI City, we are uploading your attendance. Uh, the recording video, uh, everything we are uploading. Everything we are going to be uploading. So, okay. Yeah, so based yeah. on the uh, source person uh, information, we will share the PPT. Okay, we are requested it will take some time. Yeah, they are not sharing all the PPT, whatever the distributed format they are sharing. Some of the customer data are there, they are not sharing. So I already informed with and uh, um, uh, parcel also. Already we shared this one. We will try to share it. Maybe um, before uh, 28th, we will share it as much as possible. Okay, any other clarification? Okay, then uh, uh, we'll stop okay, here. So we'll meet at uh, after okay. okay, if possible, try to use your laptop. I'll share some data set and the code everything. Okay, we'll discuss machine learning model. Okay, sir. Okay, uh, if there is no you. question, we'll stop here and we'll meet at the uh, top. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you all. Please start.